The Mercedes C-Class is the most sold model for Mercedes over 400,000 times in 2017 and so also you. A lot of customers are affected by the product update changes. This is the C-Class facelift and we will explain you everything in detail, especially also with the C43 and also the new diesel hybrid here on Autogefühl and let's dig deeper into the details in exterior and interior and also what's under the hood here. Let's go! The main difference in the front of the C-Class is always which line are you picking? Are you going with the ex executive line which has the typical Mercedes star on top which you can unfortunately also bend? And if you go for the avant-garde, the AMG line, the base model or here for the C43 you have this more modern looking front grille with the AMG line you get those diamond pins they are more glossy here with the C43 you have two fin horizontally there next to the big star logo and then you have just a matte black front grille with this pin design. They've also changed the lower bumpers on all models basically here in the C43, the sporty model of course, a little bit bigger with bigger air intakes and also the LED daytime running light, this here has been changed a little bit to have a more fluent effect. The headlights come standard with halogen and optional LED and the top trim is also with the LED high beam. 4 meter 70 or 15 foot 4 is the total length and the side profile has rather been untouched. There are some new rim choices for example. The C43 comes with 18 inch standard. Those ones here are the optional 19 inch in a black look so to be a little bit more evil. You can also get the so called night package. Then you can also see that the side, um, side covers here of the mirrors are in glossy black also all glossy black around the door frames so if you want that extra aggressive look. Other than that the main design is below the door handles here and this classic sedan shape here for the C-Class but of course also the estate will be coming with this facelift so everything we're telling you both counts for the sedan and the estate model. A base C-Class starts at about 30,000, just a little above that, and the C43 is double the price. And what else do you get? For example, a big black diffuser, then those exhaust tips, because they are all fake. The real exhaust is hidden behind that C43 logo. And then you have this small wing, and well, we've seen it recently with the CLS. I think it does fit the design a little bit more if there's just no rear wing. But then again, um, they want to attach something more sporty with the AMG model. And also the rear LED design has been redesigned just a little bit. So you have an update right there. What do you think? How do you like the facelift so far? Let me just show you the boot space of a C-Class sedan. Here also with the 43. Well, of course you're a little bit limited in height, but it's basically you know, mid-size segment sedan space and then you can also flip the seats um, with those handles here on top part, they are right there, a little bit cheaply designed I would say and then you have to go around and have this split here, you can put this one third, you also have a ski hatch available but then you can also load longer things through and it's quite even the surface. So what's powering this thing? A 3 liter 6 cylinder, not a true hand built AMG engine, one from stock, but it does deliver your power 4.7 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour. And this now has 390 horsepower, that's 23 horsepower more than pre facelift, so a little power boost for that one here. By the way, the C43 always comes with all wheel drive. I think it's also the better everyday pick than the C63. It drives a little bit more harmonic. And the base all wheel drive setup is 60% in the rear and 30% in the front. So you still have a rear wheel bias. 
However, you know, it's more suitable also for slippery conditions because it still has a lot of power. Let's take a look inside, because most changes have been happening inside. This one here with the AMG trim, we got this matte aluminum trim right there, or aluminium if you like to have me spell that way. Optional Burmester sound system that's giving you quite good sound. Then you have different seat available if we move on over there, because it starts in the C-Class with the base seat, then there's a sport seat available, that one is standard for the C43, and those ones are the performance seats, and I can strongly advise you against them, they look sportier, they look greater, but the normal sport seats will be more comfortable. Also, they have sustainable seating materials available in every C43, the base in the middle here is Dynamica microfiber, and the outside then is a leatherette, the so-called Artico, so they have great choices there, those ones here, the optional full animal skin package. Then let's get inside. And well it's never that good to be on camera then because you can you know have to reach over there for the seat controls but when the door is closed those seat controls are pretty handy because you can actually see what you're doing. However you know from seating wise there's some space still left with the headroom one meters 86 or six foot one but of course, it's still a mid-size sedan, so there's not too much headroom, especially if you have the glass roof inside there. Of course, it leaves a little bit light in there. What else is new? The steering wheel, especially with the AMG. This is the new AMG steering wheel design with this two-spoke design right there, flat bottom and perforated sides. Those ones here are also available in Dynamica mi microfiber. I can also advise you for that, because then you have a softer and better grip, um, even if you wear gloves in winter. Then you can see this is actually the biggest change with the screen. I will soon tell you more about that. First, let me show you how to control them. Because here, from our perspective, you can see with the left thumb, I can control all of the left screen. That's new now with all of the new coming infotainment systems. And also the Distronic is on the left side. If I don't have the separate lever anymore, so the adaptive cruise control can be set right there. And then for the right screen, I have my right thumb here, and then I can control everything which is in the right screen. And to get a better perspective on the screens and what screens are available, let's change our perspective. So based, you would only have a small screen in the middle, 5.5. This one, you're optional, the 12.3 full digital instruments. Again, you do not have to get it, but you can actually. And then you have you know, a lot of flexibility, what to show there, for example, you can connect the Bluetooth phone there. Here, for example, also settings for the head-up display. Um, you can pick different styles, like for a sportier style, for example, or also a classic style. And the advantage is that also GPS commands can be displayed there. Well, I'm a friend still of analog displays, even though this one looks quite fancy. Or what do you think? The head-up display, by the way, is not flickering in real life. Maybe it does a little bit here. You can also change what you are seeing in the head-up display. That's possible. Um, I think it's a useful addition, but of course, everything goes with an extra price here, so you can easily step up the game price-wise. So on the right side, you start with 7-inch. That would be about that. And this one then, the optional top spec with a 10.25-inch. And that one is really wide then. And then you can use, you can still use the classic dials, um, which are in the lower middle console, but then it's also possible to use this sum control, especially for like, zooming in and out. However, I'm usually not that satisfied with their GPS software. Um, it looks great, but sometimes it comes a little bit late when, when driving. And then you can scroll with your sum through here, for example. You can connect your phone right there, either via Bluetooth, that is possible. And let's see if we can also yeah, go back or use the home button mode there we go and this is then the connectivity part and there you can see you can also use carplay or android auto then when you plug it in and in this interior overview you can see first of all strongly wrapped in this uh, nice leather red here all over the way horizontal stress it's you know the design was a little bit blocked by the attached screen it's different, you can see, even in the top trim with some new cars, the new A-Class, for example, or also an E-Class, there is this transition between the two big screens here now. Here, it's still separated. That will be changing with the all-new C-Class. But of course, this infotainment upgrade here is the biggest one, you know, biggest change they have did. Other than that, you have the three big air vents here that make also nice clicking sounds. Separate 
climate unit. And you can see here the carbon fiber decor for the C-Class facelift. You can now also get some open cell wood decor elements. That would be also quite fancy and also feels a little bit more natural. So in the front we can flip the cup holders up. This is also the USB port where you can connect your phone for the connectivity. The cup holders. Then this is the classic control unit. You press it for example or here back to the home button. Then on the left side you can change the suspension, special for a C43. Here you have a steel suspension with the AMG setup but it's also adaptive so you can set different modes and when you're in different driving modes then it sets up. When you control it here by the way you can also see how it changes up there on the screen. For example here from comfort then the ESP is set on or sport. The ESP is drawn back a little bit. More powerful sound from the exhaust for example or just again here back. So you have different sport plus not really ready for the street but maybe rather for the racetrack. Then it gets back here, another two USB ports right there. Quite a lot of space here in the middle console and again this nice opening here with the split middle console. I somehow like it, do you? By the way, should you wonder, yes, you can control the steering height here and also the width or, or length. Um, and this one is actually electronically done, so nice to have that for sure. Now let's get into the rear compartment. It's also with this sporty design and also you could get the microfiber on the inside if you like and just stay with the base level. Well, the headroom is of course limited, especially to do this glass roof, so I'm having a hard time sitting here. Um, knee room is actually quite okay, so I was, well, I could be sitting a little bit far, further back, but knee room is totally fine. It's more really the headroom that is limiting for tall adults right here. Nice, by the way, with those red seat belts. It's a nice design feature. And you can also get another AC in the rear here if you want so. Also with nice clicking sounds for the vents. And you know, I think it was very important here to always tell you which, what is optional and what is standard. So um, either you know, showing the most fancy stuff and then, hey, it's, it's all included. And later on you wonder, hey, I don't have that in my C-Class. So we always tell you that, that you can really differentiate that. And now this one here is the avant-garde trim. You can see here also a double blade, but not as close together as with the true AMG. Again, if you had the AMG line, that would be just one blade and then the diamond pin grill. So those are the, the differences. You can see the hood is split right there. Here you can also see again the new LED daytime running light signature. If you have both cars next to each other pre and after facelift, could you really tell the difference? Well, a little bit if you look close in person. And another color here, of course. This one here is a new diesel hybrid. We'll soon take a look under the hood. What's that about? A nice detail. The front camera is hidden just right there. And to give another side profile look of this silver car, also with 18-inch rims, so you can see that's still already very suitable. So you can also leave the C43 with the base 18-inch, for example. Um, not too much tires here with the summer tires. Looks pretty fancy. And here again, the big C pillar for the classic sedan roof. Which color would you actually go for at the moment with the C class? And again, the new LED signature also at the rear. It's a little bit different. The front is not so much different from the predecessor or pre facelift. This one here, you can see a little bit better the changes. So this one is called C300DE. And yeah, .de is a sub-level or top-level domain for Deutschland, for Germany. That's pretty funny. Of course, in this case, diesel electric or diesel EQ, whatever. So let's open it. And we have already flipped the bench that you can have some light. And wow, look at that box. That's the battery below there. And this is really a massive loss in luggage space. So I think to me, a no-go for this car. I like the electrification, what they're doing. It makes sense, but this loss in luggage space, I think this, this is where the understanding of the whole thing is ending. Um, wow, pretty disappointed of that one. And now the interior here of the diesel hyper or the normal C-Class, you can see here this is the normal steering wheel, but it already has, because you know here at Geneva Motor Show, they have already set up with the two screens there, and then also the two thumb buttons. Here, for example. By the way, also the Distronic Plus has been updated a little bit um, with more functionality and um, you can you know, also have this predictive efficiency now. For example, it reads the map and then goes from the gas from Distronic in advance. Especially is also that we have the open cell wood here I've been talking earlier about. 
I really love that to have the natural feeling here. I can, if you hear that actually. So by hearing it, you can also imagine how it feels with this rather rough surface. That is not collecting fingerprints, for example. That's really nice. And now you also have different choices of open cell wood, the color you are picking. This has also been newly introduced with the facelift here. And what's interesting here in the rear, well, headroom again is a little bit cramped. So you should probably leave out this glass roof, then it will be better when you have tall people in the rear. And this one here is then, you know, a normal seat. Uh, it's a little bit different than here from the rear part. You have those holes here. That is good still for the knee room. But the sport seats are slimmer there. We have more leg room in the rear with the performance seats. But again, I think a good choice is not, you know, the base seats, not the super performance seats, but the normal sport seats that you can go optionally for. Or you can get it with the AMG line or then or standard with the C43. That would be my choice. So Mercedes with the electrification. They have EQ Boost. Those ones are the mild hybrids. They have EQ Power. Those ones are the true hybrids, the plug-in hybrids. This one we can see here. And EQ, the pure electric vehicle. So those three electric models are there for Mercedes in future. As I said, this one here, EQ Power, a plug-in hybrid. This one here is a 2-liter diesel engine with around 200 horsepower. And then you can get additional 120 horsepower from a pretty strong electric motor. So Considering the rest of the normal diesel engine, this is really considerable electric power you have here, so a strong boost, even though it's not the boost, but the EQ power there. You got that? Pretty complicated, right? And 50 kilometers of official driving range, pure electric. Mm, if that's true, well, I would rather come with about 30 kilometers. But the most important thing is that you also have a good recuperation then and can get the consumption of the diesel down. Still, the diesel will have a, an SCR cleaning for the particles and um, for, the, for the NX, of course, and then also a diesel particle filter, the Bose. So that's our conclusion here for the Mercedes C-Class facelift. Here with the avant-garde trim or rather with the AMG, you have the C43. Which one is your favorite? I think some nice design tweaks. It's not a major game changer from the exterior for sure. In the inside, you have this infotainment system upgrade. Not everyone will go for it because it's also extra in the price, but you can have those two fancy digital screens now and also with a thumb control, which is quite handy when controlling it while driving. That is helpful. No touchscreens yet, but with the new generation and we've always seen in the A-Class, there will also be a touchscreen. So this, there are actually both possibilities there then. Well, the C43, especially with a sporty look, we have seen that one here with the diesel hybrid. Um, great electric power, but I think the limitation in the trunk is actually a no-go. That's a little bit sad. But some news here for you, definitely from the Mercedes booth. I hope you enjoyed it and also tune in to other cars we are showing here.